Have you ever received feedback from a person or a group of people where you begin to doubt your own perception of reality? You saw things as they were, you heard things as they were, you saw a chain of events as they were, and somehow you end up doubting yourself because of what other people are telling you. Chances are this is gaslighting. This is a term that's thrown around quite a lot. We're gonna look at what it is, how it affects us, and basically how to stop it from happening. There's a short answer to that, which is to move away from the people that are doing it. We'll get to that bit in a moment. So, gaslighting, the term comes from a film called Gaslight, where basically, in a nutshell, the uh, husband was turning down the gas lamps, I believe, and telling the his partner that she was perceiving reality incorrectly. Um, this can get up to some very, very sinister levels. What this does is it challenges the individual's perception of reality, which leads to self-doubt, which leads to confusion, um, amongst other things, and then a general breakdown, not completely of the psyche, but this kind of complete mistrust in what's going on, you know, like not trusting memories, not trusting self, not trusting perception, not able to say anything, not able to move forward in life because everything's in doubt and it's everything that you perceive. So it's quite a sinister technique and it is employed to uh, manipulate and control people. That's why it's done. And it's, it's done by people who want to be in power and want to feel empowered probably because they don't feel empowered themselves and feel quite insecure. How does this take shape? Generally, there will be a denial of wrongdoing. There will be excuses. There will be changing of reality. There may even well be setting up scenarios and utilizing certain scenarios to one's own, to the manipulator's advantage to create some kind of self-doubt doubt, or even the appearance of uh, gaps within the memory. Um, and again, this is all, this is a psychological manipulation technique and it's quite a damaging one. So the first one is denying any wrongdoing. So literally that full on in your face, I didn't do it. I didn't say that, I didn't say it that way, I didn't do this, you are wrong, you're remembering it incorrectly, things like that. Moving on to, and now this can even be done when evidence is presented, but yeah, but I have this uh, message from you, I have this voice note from you, I have this email from you, uh, I was there, this person saw it as well. Well, they're wrong as well, they're just as crazy as you are, um, is often something that can come back as well, because this is, the idea of this is to make you look crazy, and not only to make you look crazy, but make you think that you're actually crazy and perceiving things wrong. What happens then? You rely more on the person who's manip manipulating you. This creates a kind of dependency dynamic. You could move it into codependency because the manipulator needs the victim, but this is the beginning of that process. Oh, crikey, I really need you because I'm clearly not seeing things for what they actually are. Contradictory facts may also be something that's employed. So let's have a look at some of our examples. I've known this one to happen uh, to people as well. So when someone's intoxicated, to any kind of level, might be to quite a low level, like even only having had one or two drinks, and they fall asleep, and then the manipulator will maybe uh, break some things in the house, maybe smash a phone, something like that, and maybe sleep on the couch as well to add in to their charade to make it seem more plausible, more real, and kind of accuse the other person when they wake up the next day that, hey, do you know we had a fight last night? You were a bit drunk, you were quite aggressive, you threw your phone at me, uh, or you smashed some cutlery, um, you threw some plates, you scared the kids. Um, I've had to send them off to school, you know, I had to take them early, maybe they even did take them early, to just to add to the charade. And, uh, I mean, this is at quite a, by now this is in full effect, this is a real, real intense manipulation, but it does happen to the point where you're like, well, okay, I don't think that happened, but they're saying it happened and I trust them and I believe them because they're my partner, because they're my friend, because they're a family member, but, you know, I can't, really remember, I, I vaguely remember, maybe you did have words. That will be an, something else, maybe they provoked 
a kind of argument and you just went, ah, oh, I can't be bothered to deal with this and went to bed. And that's then when they'll amplify up their behaviours. So that's a kind of one extreme. The other one is to just kind of deny any wrongdoing, to kind of uh, make out um, that you are perceiving things incorrectly. Now, the other thing that can happen, something which is more along the lines of this kind of compassionate uh, criticism. So uh, this is a lot harder to detect. So this might come across like, um, you don't seem to be managing very well. Let, let me help you because I, I think it's better if I do it. Or yeah, you seem to be struggling. You know, it will be along those lines. You, you, you seem to be struggling. You're not coping. Clearly you're not capable of this. I'll take over. I'll do this. It's better if I do it that kind of stuff, and it's kind of like, that leads to the same thing, it's kind of gaslighting, basically. It's telling you that you're not capable when you very well might be. Maybe they've set it up, and this can move into the realms of, you know, looking after children, your own children. So maybe a spouse or, the, or an ex-spouse uh, kind of trying to manipulate you, manipulate the children away from you, crush you, break you down by kind of this kind of devaluing but I'm going to come in and save you at the same time. It could be along the lines of um, you seem to take everything so negatively. You seem very, very sensitive. You know how you are. You perceive things wrong. That was not my intention. I don't know how you've managed to take it that way. All of this stuff. So this is like compassionate, but it's putting it back on you. It's making you doubt yourself. It's making you doubt reality. And you kind of think, well, you know, I heard the tone of voice, actually. This is how you, it normally starts in the early stages. I heard the tone of voice. You know, and I, and I saw how you were, and I saw the facial expressions, but well, well, maybe I was a bit unreasonable. You know, it's that kind of thought process which begins to go on in the individual on the receiving end of such techniques. And again, it's this wearing down, it's this making you s doubt reality, making you doubt yourself, more importantly, making you mistrust your judgment. Some other compassionate phrase or compassionate critical phrases to help the, to move the gaslighting along might be, um, you used to be really good at this, but I noticed that you're not so much anymore. Again, this kind of let me take over, or maybe you shouldn't burden yourself with so much. Maybe you shouldn't take on so much. Um, it could also be if you're doing well and new opportunities are coming your way, maybe a new promotion, maybe something in work, maybe you're gonna study a new course, something like that, and it's like, well, yeah, you know, but you've got enough to do at the moment. Maybe you really shouldn't take on anything else. I mean, you know how you get, and you can think, what do you mean you know how I get? Um, you know, uh, maybe you shouldn't progress, basically. Maybe you shouldn't move forward in life is the message, but they will put it onto you so that you begin to doubt yourself. You know, you are really busy, you've got a lot going on, so maybe you shouldn't take on this extra thing. Maybe you shouldn't do these things. Uh, Maybe you should prioritize us, et cetera, et cetera. So again, these can also be messages that come from um, someone who is actually concerned about you. So this, is, this is where it gets very, very tricky. Is this a reality or is this not? So you need to do a reality check. And that's really hard if you're under the influ if you're un under the bombardment of someone gaslighting you. So it's like, well, am I, is this what's happening? Um, or am I actually quite capable? Is this is their own person's insecurities? I'm moving forward in life, my career is taking off, I'm ambitious, blah, 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 and they are insecure about it, maybe they're jealous about it, maybe they're trying to hold me back, give me lead boots. Is that what's going on? Um, the trouble with that is, is if your self-esteem is beginning to be eroded already, you're going to begin to side with the person who's doing the gaslighting. The same as with this not being capable anymore, it's going to produce the same kind of effect. When you're like, well, I am, hang on, I am capable, I do this and this. So do a reality check. You know what, I, you know, I, I get the kids to school on time, I get myself dressed, I get up in the morning, I go to work, I do this at work, work says I'm good at this, work says that, work are happy with me, the only person who's not happy with me is actually you. Um, and that's normally the moment you should really consider walking away from the relationship, whatever that relationship may be. Because it doesn't have to be in a romantic relationship. It can come from family as well, trying to hold you back, trying to pull you down, trying to scapegoat you. Maybe they're all crazy. Maybe they're all really dysfunctional and you're the only one who's not dysfunctional or less dysfunctional than they are. And they don't like it. So they try to bring you back into their circle. And they can manage you that way. I, I can understand you when you're dysfunctional because I'm dysfunctional, but I can't understand you when you're functional that's just weird so they'll gaslight you um, uh, and other devaluing mechanisms that people will employ 
So do a reality check if you can. Go to a friend if you can't do it yourself. You know, don't be, go to a therapist or, or a healer or a guru. Try to, you know, kind of outlay because if you describe the situations to them, they might be able to highlight to you the contradictions that are going on between reality and the gaslighting reality and the stories you are being told. But like I say, it's quite an effective manipulation technique in terms of depowering someone really quite quickly because you begin to become anxious, like I said, um, you begin to mistrust yourself, you don't trust your judgment, you begin to play into the rhetoric as well, oh, crikey, okay, maybe, oh, maybe they're right. You begin to believe it. And um, like in a previous video I did uh, about um, the inner critic, you may even well interject this stuff and internalize this. It's kind of, yeah, you know, I am actually not coping and I'm not doing this and, well, they seem to be right. And again, you move to this, well, now I depend on them. And once you're depending on them, you are the fly in the spider's web. They have you. So recognize the signs early on. Do the reality check. Am I actually not coping? Am I actually overburdening myself with work, family commitments, whatever it may be? And this is a concerned partner, in which case it might come across, they might actually use slightly different phrases. Like, I'm really worried about you. I'm going to support you through this. And I'm, you know, you do what you think you want to do, you know, and I will support, but I am a bit worried about your health. That's slightly different to, well, you know, uh, you're taking on too much and yeah, you're not coping as it is. And, you know, that is, the, it's a subtle difference, but because it's still both appear compassionate. Well, one seems a little bit more sincere than the other one. So how do you counteract this? Well, like I said, do a reality check, keep evidence. Uh, document evidence, uh, maybe use messenger services and things to communicate different uh, aspects or different things that you need to talk about. Then you have it in black and white, then you have it in an audio message, you can see the chain of events, you can see how it is and you can, now they still might deny what's going on, they still might say you're, you're making this up, you're exaggerating, you're amplifying, you're seeing it all negative, the, I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way, I, it was not my intention, why have you taken it that way? But you can actually I go, well, hang on, they said this, and I said that, and then they said this, and I said that, and then we're here. And well, actually, this is quite different to, the reality of it is quite different. The sequence of events is quite different to what they say. So now you're gathering evidence. You can, I mean, I don't want to turn you into a paranoid wreck, but if you're, start, if you're at the stage of gathering evidence, you're also at the stage of you really need to get out of that relationship. You need to put that person at arms length because they are not doing you any good. You're gathering evidence, massive, massive alarm bells should, should be going off for you. And if they aren't, switch them on. You are now caught up in something which is leading you to what appear like paranoid behaviors. And that can even be thrown, oh my, oh my days. Really, you've got to go and gather evidence as well. I mean, how paranoid are you that you're even having to do this? What are you showing me? I don't want to listen to that. I mean, you'll get all of that because they're just gaslighting you, they're manipulating you, they are grinding you down, or at least that's the attempt. So how do you recover from this? How do you move past this? Well, short of leaving the relationship and putting the relationship at arm's length. Now, if that's not entirely possible or not feasible in a small or short space of time, there are, like I said, you can gather evidence, you can reach out to your own network to help keep your view of reality as subjective, as subjective as it may be, but to keep it in check somehow, like I am perceiving this right, you know, this did happen, that did happen, I did do this, I did do that, yes you did, yes this did happen and they did say this, you are perceiving reality correctly, yes you did do well at work, yes you did do well at this, no there was no kind of violent altercation at the bar between you two, there was no sign of um, any argument when you were out with us the other night, we didn't see anything like that. In fact, they did say a couple of things which we thought were a bit off and were sort of like attempts at provocation. Um, or yeah, actually they've confided in us and said that they're really concerned about you for X, Y and Z reasons. And we thought it was a bit strange that they did that because we don't see that. So again, you're checking out against reality. You're, you're creating a support network. You're finding evidence to help keep yourself sane actually, um, reduce the anxiety, reduce the wearing down on your own self-esteem. You can go and see a therapist, you can go and see another helper if you like. You can put boundaries in in the relationship and you can also take a step away yourself. So if it's a relationship where you're able to put it at arm's length, do that.
If not, if it's a very close relationship, you may well have to put some boundaries in, which will be kicked against, chances are, because once the manipulator starts to lose its victim, the manipulator will discard the victim and move on to somebody else. So it's the beginning of the end, often. Um, I would say sadly, but not in this case. Um, it's good that it would be ending and you can get out from underneath such techniques and tactics because they are only going to drive you into the ground, into, uh, well, frankly, a gibbering mess, mess who um, loses everything. I hope that helps. It gives you a little bit of an overview of what gaslighting is. It is an effective manipulation technique. It is subtle and it will challenge your perception of reality and it will erode you really, really quickly, especially if you trust the other person because the first person you'll start mistrusting is yourself. That's the point of it. That's, and then you will rely on the person that you still hold the trust with who happens to be your manipulator. So it's a little bit of, not direct, not literally Stockholm Syndrome, but it's that kind of effect that's going on. The persecutor becomes the all powerful and you are beholden to them. So we'll frankly get out and get away as quick as possible. I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a little bit of understanding. And if you are going through it, I hope you are able to find support. I urge you to reach out and get some support and uh, begin to build yourself back up. Until next time that I see you, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.